Hey everybody, this is Kay Center from The Practical Herbalist, and today we are talking about an herbal steam. How do you do one and why would you want to, right? Herbal steams are amazingly helpful for a bunch of different reasons, right? First of all, they are really wonderful if you want to open your pores up. So if you want to have skin that's clear, clean, you know, that spa-like skin, it's like a spa treatment. An herbal steam can really help you out, especially depending on which herbs you want to you know, choose. Opening your pores up allows your skin to breathe and allows you to be able to do a deeper cleanse. So if you're going to follow it with like, with like a mud mask or an oil cleanse, you can really clear out the um, old crud and the stuff from your skin and give it a lot more luster and, and, and revitalize it. It's also really soothing and feels good. So, you know, it's de-stressing. I love that aspect. I've done herbal steams at times, in fact, for stress. And especially just shortly before bed, I'll do an herbal steam potentially with like some lavender, maybe a little bit of elderflower to help me dream nicely, or a little mugwort to help me dream well. And then, you know, Oh, maybe a little bit of something that's like warm and deep, like ginger, which is it's not stimulating, but it's warming. So I'll use just a teeny bit of the ginger. And that really, it relaxes. It helps the body relax. It opens your pores. It also opens your sinuses up so that you breathe better. And it can be very soothing. So beauty, de-stressing. It's also very a really wonderful approach if you want to use, um, if you've got an illness that you're trying to clear or allergies you're trying to clear. When you do an herbal steam, typically we're, we're only gonna get, you know, head, upper body with the steam. So that means you're gonna be breathing it in. It will, the steam and the warm air and the essential oils that you breathe in will reach down into your lungs. So you'll get your whole respiratory system with it. That is terrific if you're dealing with things like sinus infections, again, allergies, um, congestion of any sort, uh, working, worried or concerned that you're starting to come down with a cold and you know you breathe something in that you shouldn't have. It can also be helpful if you have been a smoker or if you've been exposed to an excessive amount of smoke, like you know the wildfires we had last summer. <clears throat> because that will, you can help to heal the um, respiratory system doing a steam that way. Um, herbs like the mint family, rosemary is a particular favorite of mine. Um, and then also like mullein is a really good one. I typically will include some softening types of herbs, things that are gentle to the mucosal system. So mullein is one of them, but also um, marshmallow leaf is another one that I like to include if I'm doing a steam for sinus types of things and then always a antimicrobial so like thyme oregano you know one of those i would not put chili pepper into a steam because that's going to overwhelm you you just need to like smell a chili pepper and that should get things flowing right um, the other thing that i'd like to use steams for is when there's a fever and i want to bring that down particularly if i have a fever accompanying any kind of respiratory symptoms so if I've got what looks like a mild cold and my temperature's a little elevated, I'm likely to pair my fever herbs with some antimicrobial herbs, throw that in the steam, and then do that to help open my sinuses, open my pores, and move the energy. So steams are terrific. They got a lot of good reasons why you want to do one. The question is, how do you do one? How do you do one that's really practical and easy at home? Here's my tip. Hey everyone, today we are going to do an herbal steam and I'm going to start off by showing you the herbs we have to work with here. Um, I have chosen a selection of herbs. I have a few from my yard, like this rosemary that's from my yard. Rosemary is really good for stimulating, waking up and that sort of thing. It's also a terrific antimicrobial. So I'm going to get, I've, you need a really big wide bowl, preferably something that's wide enough to be wider than your face or your head, and then we're going to put the rosemary in here. I put it in with the sticks, but I try to bruise or wake up 
uh, scrunch up or uh, yeah, bruise the herbs as well. So we've got a little bit of rosemary. Got a little bit more. So I'll put this rosemary in too. And then we're gonna add some yarrow. This was also from my yard. I actually took this, pulled this out of the yard when I was gardening a little bit ago. Yarrow is a good fever herb. It helps to um, open up your pores. It's also really good if you're doing uh, beauty or wanna like open up your skin and help to get the impurities out. So put the yarrow in there. And then I've got some elderflower, which is another good fever herb, but it's also good for opening up the pores and opening up the skin. It also helps to open up the perception. So I personally really love the lightening that comes with, with elderflower. Not whitening, lightening. Uh, as in lightening your energy, your perception. I've got a few chrysanthemum flowers. These are really nice for um, reducing heat not just of the fever type, but also like um, heat toxins, pulling those out of your, helping your body open up and let those go. I pulled in some calendula, which is a good antibacterial, antifungal, and uh, generally helps to um, tone the skin. Let's so put that in. And then my friend Eric is a massive, massively good gardener and he dried these rose petals for me. So I'm gonna add those because I love the scent and they smell just delicious. So you'll notice I have a big handful of herbs here. When you're making an herbal steam, if you're doing it for medicinal strength, you want at least you know a big handful or two. If you're doing it primarily for beauty or detoxification, you can go lighter. You wanna do the minimum you wanna do is the amount that you would put into an herbal tea. If you want, you can do more than that. Like I said, it's, this is like enough to make a teapot full. So that's about what you're looking for. These are fluffy, so. And you can use fresh or dried herbs. We're gonna use some hot water in just a moment here to break up the cells and release the essential oils. Herbs that have a lot of essential oils or volatile oils are often the best ones to use for herbal steams. So let me get my pot and I will show you how it's done. All right. All right, we've got our herbs in our bowl. Our bowl is wide enough to be um, wider than our face. We set the bowl close to us and then we're gonna need a towel or some people use, I've got a towel here. Um, some people use sheets. Um, I do have another friend who uses old saris. It, whatever it is, it just needs to be a large cloth that you can drape over your shoulders, cover your head and cover the bowl. So I've got my towel ready. I have my kettle, which I have set to bring to a boil. Because I'm filming this, it might be slightly under a boil, but you wanna do it right as it's good and piping hot. So what you're gonna do is pour, pour this, and you can see the steam coming up. We're gonna reach a point here where the vision gets really cloudy and I probably will shut the video off. But you notice how I'm pouring a decent body of water in there. The more water, the more steam, and the longer it will last. So if you want to do this for like children who often don't handle steam well, or don't like want to be in the steam long, you don't need as much water. But for me, I like a lot of steam. So what I have got here is, I'm showing you sort of what it looks like. So I've got the uh, thing tented up over me, all right? Normally we put this down all the way, but that gets too dark for the video camera, so I lift it up a little bit so you can see. Nice and steamy. Oh, those rose petals are so nice. All right, so you see how I've got it tented up over me. The idea is to catch the steam, so I'm gonna show you what it will look like. So the idea is to catch the steam while you're there. Now, while we are doing this, while you've got it over you, what you're going to do, the steam will be gathering, you breathe in and out. And 
And the idea is to let the steam gather around your face and come up into your respiratory system. It is okay while you're doing a steam if it starts to get too hot to sit up and take a fresh breath of air and then go back down into it. You want to do the steam as long as there's steam coming out if you can. But if you start to feel overwhelmed, if it's too hot, if it's whatever, if you're finding yourself lightheaded, you have any reason at all that you're uncomfortable with continuing, it is okay to stop at whatever point you're ready. If you're working with small children or children, oftentimes they go really barely. Like you'll get them to do a little bit, but they won't do a lot. If they're very uncomfortable with the heat, you can have them do the steam just like I am here with no towel over if you can't get them to gather it. And if you get them to put their face down close, but not into the, the heat, you know, but close so they can breathe it in, they'll still get a pretty decent amount of the essential oils and the steam that's coming off. So that is how you do an herbal steam. It's pretty simple. And it's a very effective tool both for beauty, detoxification, and for treating illness. So as you saw, it's really, really quite simple. Personally, I love to pair my herbal tea. So I'll use the same um, herbs that I'm using in the steam. I'll put a little bit of them in my mug and, and let them steep while I'm doing my steam. And oftentimes, by the time I'm done, the herbs that are in my mug are ready to go. If you want to learn more about how to do a really good herbal infusion, feel free to check out the Practical Herbalists, um, how to master herbal infusions, how to master this technique, video and article on the Practical Herbalist. Um, that's for the Herbal Nerd Society members. If you're a member, you've got that already. And uh, that I think covers that. And then we've got an article on the Practical Herbalist about how to do a steam that gives you just the basic rundown. It's good, it's easy. There you go. Do an herbal steam today. It'll be fun. If you like this video, get more by joining the Herbal Nerd Society. You'll get custom articles and videos each month, plus you'll be supporting the Practical Herbalist and Real Herbalism Radio. Click the Join button at the Practical Herbalist to join the Herbal Nerd Society today.